et du... Allô Ah, un, deux. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to chair this session on energy and environment. We've heard a lot today with a very insightful session. And it, for me, it's a great pleasure to welcome uh, very knowledgeable people in this panel. And I will immediately start uh, with Mr. Happer. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay, so, thank you. Uh, I will, uh, so you will, would you present, would you, would you put your, my presentation, my slides? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine is uh, clearly a wake up call. Geopolitics is a key dimension in the energy sector. I would like to quote André Giraud, former uh, Minister of Industry during the second oil shock in France, who used to say, oil is a resource with huge diplomatic and defense dimension, with a fiscal content and marginally a calorific value. The same applies also for natural gas. So in my present short presentation, I will first develop the main dimensions uh, of the geopolitics of the energy sector. And then uh, I'll come back to the decisive turning point of February 24th. And then I will highlight the ongoing tensions on oil and gas sector. Geopolitics has always, well, always been a key dimension of the oil sector. This is due to the concern of security of supply. The unequal distribution of oil and gas reserves you can see on this slide is uh, uh, an important concern. And on this map, the size of each country is related to the importance of its oil reserves. And this slide illustrates clearly the ge geological anomaly of the Middle East. The same applies to natural gas. Two-thirds of gas reserves are located between the 5th and the 70th meridians, specifically Russia, Iran, or Qatar. However, these slides do not include non-conventional resources. The revolution of non-conventional hydrocarbons is a major game-changer for geopolitics. Today, the United States are the first producers of oil and petroleum products in the world. In 2020, they became independent for their energy supply for the first time since 1952. This game changer has a major impact on geopolitics. For example, in 2020, Barack Obama highlighted that the country regains an important latitude in their diplomacy thanks to their energy autonomy. The Ukrainian conflict uh, is a clear example of this return of geopolitics. Thanks to their renewed energy independence, the US were claiming a leadership on the world energy market on, and also on the supply of Europe. The Russia, the first gas exporter, is threatening on the, their side the energy weapon which has been made afterwards. The political situation of the Middle East is always unstable. The election of Joe Biden confirmed the disengagement of the US in the Middle East. China and Russia take this opportunity to increase their influence on the region. The wars in Libya, Syria, Yemen, are not yet sold, and the withdrawal of the US of the Gypsy POA with Iran is creating further uncertainties. This unstable situation is a real threat for the energy sector due to the importance of the resources of energy in this region. China is a key player in the world economy. This slide shows the share of China in the growth of some industrial and energy indicators since 1978. More than 80% of the growth of coal or steel demand 
worldwide, 60% of carbon emissions. As the largest energy consumer and CO2 emitter in the world, China is key with rising geopolitical tensions as a major stumbling block. As the energy supply is the Achilles Neil Hill of its economy, China is developing a dynamic diplomacy all around the world, Middle East, Russia, Africa. We should not ignore the geopolitical challenges linked with the energy transition, and I will be very short due to the excellent discussion during the precedent session. Renewable energy is requiring growing resource of critical raw material. Access of, uh, and prices of many resources is a challenge such as cobalt, copper, rare earth. And you can see on this slide uh, <coughs> the main producers of uh, uh, critical raw material. China has a clear leadership on critical raw material as it is shown on this slide. China has also a quasi-monopolistic position on certain technologies such as solar panel and batteries. So the invasion of Ukraine by Russia on the 24th of February is a decisive turning point. This dramatic event has a major impact on the energy scene. I just remind you that uh, Russia is a key player on the energy market. It represents 6.4% of oil reserves, 17.3% of gas reserves, third producers, oil producer of oil, and first exporter of natural gas. Europe was heavily relying on Russian energy supplies. 23% of European oil imports, 46% of gas, and 60% of coal. On vice versa, Russian economy was relying on energy export to Europe. Total energy export of Russia represents 25% of its gross domestic product and 57% of its export. And for the last 20 years, this mutual dependence was a win-win solution. It's over now. Ukraine invasion impacted immediately the gas market both in Europe and Asia. Volatility and prices increased dramatically. The same happened for oil and electricity. Most European countries reacted in order to mitigate the impact to the final consumer. Rapidly, the European Union took embargo measures on coal and oil. We may question the real impact of these measures on the Russian economy. Both coal and oil markets are deep and Russia has been able to redirect its export. For example, India increased by a factor of 10 its imports of oil from Russia. However, the situation is clearly different for natural gas. So clearly, uh, in the near future, we may anticipate uh, a geopolitical tension of the oil and gas market. The, uh, the oil market will be faced uh, by, uh, to a growing tension. It is due to the lack of investment in exploration production, which has been reduced by a factor of two since 2014. At the same time, the oil demand continues to grow. It will not be possible to compensate uh, uh, the natural depletion of existing field, which is estimated at about 6% per annum without investment. <coughs> for example, for the next 10 years, the IEA estimates that the production of new fields to be developed amounts to 20 to 30 million barrels per day for a total market of uh, 100 million barrels per day. The oil market will be stretched as we experience 15 years ago. At the same time, the market has been rebalanced through, at that time, the, the market has been rebalanced thanks to the dramatic growth of non-conventional oil in the US. However, it will may not uh, be surely the case in the future. 
There are significant uncertainties, both technical and economical, for the development of non-conventional oil in the US. The uh, EIA, for example, the uh, American uh, Institute uh, on, of Energy, estimate that the US production will reach a plateau in 2030 and then starts to decline. The situation will clearly increase the power of OPEC plus on the market. On April the, 20, uh, the 12th of 2020, reacting to the COVID crisis, OPEC Plus decided to reduce its production quotas by 9.7 million barrels per day for a total market uh, of 100 million barrels per day. Afterwards, it decided to increase it slowly its production, keeping a clear grasp on the market. On October the 5th this year, OPEC Plus decided again to reduce their quota by 2 million barrels per day. This renewed control of the market is a major geopolitical game changer and a major threat for the consumers. Natural gas market is tightening. This is a clear challenge for Europe, which is relying heavily on Russian supplies. LNG is a unique alternative. For the last six months, LNG imports jumped to 40%. At the same time, the share of Russian gas supplies to Europe dropped from 40% to 10%. But there are many bottlenecks. Liquefaction, LNG carriers, regasification plants. For this winter, the gas storage are almost full, but we may question the, uh, the situation for the next winters. In fact, the liquefaction capacity is stretched all around the world. New liquefaction plants are under construction in Qatar, in the US, or Australia, but they will not come to the market before 2025-2026. In a nutshell, the geopolitics is an unescapable challenge of the energy sector for the near, next years to come. It is clearly urgent to integrate this dimension on the energy policies to be put in place all around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olivier. I just uh, want to mention that Olivier is the chairman of France Brevet, scientific advisor of the Center for Energy and Climate of IFRI and former president of the French Energy Council. Maybe some question in the room for Olivier at this stage, if you are one. Yes, please. Hello, Nicolas Pio from Tilt Capital, an energy transition investor. Do, do you see potentially an issue with also the piling up of, uh, I would say, the perfect storm with the financing? Because today, I think in, in the US, 60% of COV-like loans and high yield, lo uh, high yield bonds are structured against the uh, unconventional oil and gas market. And it's a, it's a market that has been structurally deficit in terms of cash flows. Do you see that as a potential additional risk um, in, the, in the oil and gas market for future supplies? Um, uh, clearly, uh, there is an evolution of the financial, uh, uh, financial industry towards the investment of oil and gas. Uh, there is a strong, uh, uh, an increasing uh, reluctance of the financial institution and the banks and the lenders to lend to the uh, to, to the uh, for uh, exploration and production of the uh, oil oil and gas. Um, the, there is a specific uh, dimension in the U.S. with non-conventional hydrocarbons. Because uh, the, um, uh, in, in the past, I would say uh, five or ten years uh, ago, uh, they just invest. Now, they are not investing as it was in the past. They are uh, taking into account the profitability of the, these investments. And there has been, uh, in, in the past, uh, a huge uh, failure of uh, many, many companies 
And now in the US, they are very cautious. That's why in the evaluation of the uh, Energy Information Agency of the US, uh, they don't anticipate uh, a very, an important increase of uh, non-conventional oil supply. There will be perhaps a peak, it will increase some, some way, but there will be a plateau. It's not the case specifically for, for natural gas, because for natural gas it's easier and also there is the outcome of LNG of the world market. The world is requiring more and more uh, natural gas. But uh, there is uh, not, there, there are no investment. I would say the international uh, oil companies, uh, now they are investing uh, mostly, I would say, for total, 50% of the investment are in oil and gas and 50% in uh, 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 transition, uh, the transition economy. Thank you, Olivier. Other question from other person? Yes, please, Mr. Jalma. Uh, you spoke about uh, uh, liquefaction bottleneck. Isn't it a regasification bottleneck in Europe? Clearly, it's uh, a regasification bottleneck. You, you remember on the slide I presented with uh, Putin and Trump. At that time, Putin was asking to Germany to invest in regasification they were strongly opposed to any such investments. Uh, they decided recently to buy a new regasification, but uh, it's not sufficient. That's why there is this agreement between France and Germany. France is delivering natural gas from the, energy the LNG regasification plant in France. And vice versa, Germany is bringing uh, the uh, electricity from coal, unfortunately. But there are also uh, bottlenecks in uh, liquefaction because there are some new plants coming on stream in the US. Uh, in Qatar, there will be a, a strong increase of uh, production, but it will not come, uh, uh, it will not come before 2025. That's why uh, we, in Europe, we have been able, we will be able to pass the winter. But I'm not sure, thanks to uh, all the uh, natural gas uh, liquid which is available on the market, it's no more the case. The, uh, all, the, all, all the supply which could have been uh, kept uh, uh, keep, uh, have been kept. And uh, I'm afraid that uh, we will have the next two winters will be very difficult for Europe. We will come back to the discussion. I want to